Hello everyone! I hope you're having a good day, night, witching hour, or whatever time you may find yourself watching this. I decided to make this video because I knew this piece was going to be particularly complex for me, at least. Doing two characters in full body is already challenging for me, let alone four set in a space with specific lighting. Suffice to say, I was very nervous all the while I was working on it. I began planning this piece somewhere around late November last year, doing some character designs when I had a time to spare, and actually starting it at the end of November. I just finished it a couple of days ago. If you pay enough attention, you can even see my nails changing several times throughout the video. These are characters from George R. R. Martin's book, A Knight of Seven Kingdoms, which belongs to the overall story of A Song of Ice and Fire. I think it happens like some hundred years before the whole Game of Thrones thing. I'm pretty sure it's something like that, but I'm not an expert. But yeah, this was commissioned by a friend of mine who really likes this story. This scene I'm painting would take place somewhere in the Hedge Knight. Somewhere that never happened, but it would have been nice if it did. Hedge Knight is the first novella of the fort that are collected inside A Knight of Seven Kingdoms, which are all the stories of Dunk and Egg, who are the main characters for these. In this story, Dunk takes the mantle of a Hedge Knight after the old knight he squired for passes away. On the way to compete in a tournament, he meets a young boy named Egg, who soon becomes his squire. I found the story particularly charming for one such as Mr. R. R. Martin. It was really very cute, and I was very surprised by that, having watched the first four seasons of Game of Thrones some years ago. In this piece, I'm depicting Dunk or Duncan at the far left, Egg below, he's a little boy, and Tansel and an unnamed woman who accompanies her. At the place of the tournament, Donk meets Tansel at one of her puppet shows. He finds himself smitten by her beauty and tall figure. Donk himself is quite the tall man, so he thinks in passing thought that they are just perfect for one another. If you have very little knowledge of A Song of Ice and Fire or the series, like myself, I think this is still a very good read if you ever want to give it a go. A small adventure that'll tuck gently at your heartstrings. I'm using watercolor pencils for this piece and regular watercolor too. Just last year was my first time working with watercolor pencils and I quite like them. The finished look that they leave is very texturized and they allow you more control over a certain spot than regular watercolor does, in my opinion at least. By virtue alone of being, well, actual pencils. I will now leave you with a small extract from the novella where Dunk and Tansel meet for the second time. And for the person who commissioned this from me, I dedicate this video to you. You've been a great friend these past couple of years I've known you, so thank you for that. I hope you enjoy it. He found Egg at the puppet show, sitting cross-legged on the ground, with the hood of his cloak pulled all the way forward to hide his boldness. 
The boy had been afraid to enter the castle, which Dunk put down to equal parts shyness and shame. He does not think himself worthy to mingle with lords and ladies, let alone great princes. It had been the same with him when he was little. The world beyond Flea Bottom had seemed as frightening as it was exciting. Egg needs time, that's all. For the present, it seemed kinder to give the lad a few coppers and let him enjoy himself among the stalls than to drag him along unwillingly into the castle. This morning, the puppeteers were doing the tale of Florian and Jonquil. The fat Dornish woman was working Florian in his armor made of motley while the tall girl held John Quill's strings. You are no knight, she was saying as the puppet's mouth moved up and down. I know you. You are Florian the Fool. I am, my lady, the other puppet answered, kneeling. As great a fool as ever lived, and as great a knight as well. A fool and a knight? said Junquil. I have never heard of such thing. Sweet lady, said Florian, all men are fools, and all men are knights where women are concerned. It was a good show, sad and sweet both, with a sprightly sword fight at the end, and a nicely painted giant. When it was over, the fat woman went along the crowd to collect coins, while the girl packed away the puppets. Donk collected egg and went up to her. My lord, she said, with a sideways glance and a half smile. She was a head shorter than he was, but still taller than any other girl he had ever seen. That was good, egg enthused. I like how you make them move, Junquil and the dragon and all. I saw a puppet show last year, but they moved all jerky. Yours are more smooth. Thank you, she told the boy politely. Dunk said, your figures are well carved too. The dragon especially, a fearsome beast. You make them yourself? She nodded. My uncle does the carving. I paint them. Could you paint something for me? I have the coin to pay. He slipped the shield off his shoulder and turned it to show her. I need to paint something over the chalice. The girl glanced at the shield and then at him. What would you want painted? Dunk had not considered that. If not the old man's winged chalice, what? His head was empty. Dunk the lung, thick as a castle wall. I don't... I'm not certain. His ears were turning red, he realized miserably. You must think me an utter fool. She smiled. All men are fools, and all men are knights. What color paints do you have? He asked, hoping that might give him an idea. I can mix paints to make any color you want. The old man's brown had always seemed daft to Donk. The field should be the color of sunset, he said suddenly. The old man liked sunsets and the device. An elm tree, said Egg. A big elm tree, like the one by the pool, with a brown trunk and green branches. Yes, Dunk said. That would serve. An elm tree, but with a shooting star above. Could you do that? The girl nodded. Give me the shield. I'll paint it this very night.
and have it back to you on the morrow. Dunk handed it over. I am called Sir Duncan the Tall. I am Tensel, she said with a laugh. Tensel too tall, the boys used to call me. You're not too tall at all, Dunk blurted out. You just tried for her. He realized what he had been about to say and blushed furiously. For? said Tensel, cocking her head inquisitively. Puppets, he finished lamely.